Megany Church and our online family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us for Bible study on tonight. We pray that you will share this video with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight will come from St. John, the third chapter, verses 14 through 17 from the New King James Version. And it reads, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The scripture says that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only unique Son to die for us while we were yet dead in our sins. God loves us because he created us. He made us. He doesn't love us because we are lovable. No, he loves us because he is a God of love. It is his character to love and there is nothing we can do about it to make him stop loving us. I am so glad that God loves us. That's why I can sing this song, Lord, we love you and adore you. We lift our voices to your name because you are worthy of all honor. We praise your name. Lord, help me sing.
Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus of Christ we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege, another honor. God, we thank you for this great opportunity to come before you. God, we praise you today for you are worthy. We glorify you. We magnify you. We, we wrap, Father God, our thoughts toward you. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us and walk with us. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. We ask you, Father God, to continue to bless us, Father God, in a way that only you can. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to forgive us in a way, Father God, that we will turn from our sins and that we will walk with you. Bless your word on tonight, Father God, that your word will set well with us, that your word will convict us, that your word will transform us, that your word will make us better. Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. To the Lamb. Certainly God himself, he is worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. God has blessed us again, and he has brought us this far to study his word one more time. Mm -hmm. Tonight we will be looking at James chapter 1. James chapter 1, we are in our topical teaching uh, as we began on last week. We are in our topical teaching, so we're not, we're not actually dealing with a particular book of the Bible. We're dip, dig, digging with topics for the rest of this year. Tonight's topic is self-control and temptation. <laughs> Tonight's topic is self-control as it deals with temptation. Tonight's topic is self-control. James chapter 1, James chapter 1, we'll be looking at verses 12 through 18. James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. In the New Testament, the book is James, the chapters 1. We'll be looking at verses 12 through 18. We all know that self-control can become a problem for many of us, even those of us who are born again, those of us who know the Lord. Oftentimes, we, we move on emotions. We move uh, without thinking. Oftentimes, we move without uh, even giving a thought to, to what will happen be the long-term effects. So we make decisions, momentary decisions that will cause problems for the rest of our lives. Tonight we want to talk about self-control. And as we talk about self-control, we understand that we're in the, in the middle of a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare that we're in. We're in a warfare that is spiritual. This is not a flesh and blood warfare. This is a spiritual warfare. And this warfare is spiritual spiritual in such a way until we have to be conscious. Every chance we get, we have to be conscious of the fact that it's a spiritual warfare. We can't fight it with flesh and blood. We can't fight it with every little weapon that we have found uh, that at our, in our arsenal. We have to fight this war through the word of God, through the spirit of God, uh, putting on the whole arm of God. So let's look at John, I mean, James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. It begins in verse 12 by saying, blessed is the man who endures temptation. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire it has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, 
bring forth death. Do not be, be do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Self-control. Being under control in the middle of temptation. He talks about the fact that we are blessed when we endure temptation. What is your temptation? What are you going through? What thing in life draws your attention away from God? The Bible teaches, James also says, that there are three things that draws our attention away from God and pulls us into temptation. It pulls us into sin. There's lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. When you look at Eve, when she looked at the forbidden fruit, it was lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. When Adam came on the scene and Eve offered him the forbidden fruit, it was through lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. If we are tempted, we are going to be tempted by lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Regardless of what trials you go through, regardless of how much uh, you've been through, your temptation will come every single time by one of these three. So we all will have temptations. And because we all will have temptation, we have to understand that this is not a flesh and blood warfare we're in. In order for us to fight an enemy, we must identify the opponent. The devil is the opponent. Satan, Lucifer, the accuser of the brother, he is the opponent. Not our spouses, not our friends, not our family members. It is the devil himself. So the Bible says, <clears throat> blessed is the man who endures temptation. A man that endures temptation. He, he suffered through it. He suffers through this temptation. And temptation is an adversity. Temptation is a trial. Temptation is when uh, the devil comes unto you or in the form of anybody that you love or anybody that you don't like. It, the Bible says in verse 12, the man who endures this temptation, endure these trials, he or she is blessed. This word blessed means that you have favor in the trials. This word blessed means that you're well off in the midst of the trial. This word blessed means that you are fortunate in the midst of the trial. Yeah, you may go through the trial. Situation, situations may come and go. But temptations are merely a test. Matter of fact, to the devil, it's just an experiment. It's a trial. It's a test that we're going through. And the Bible teaches the one who endures, the one who suffers through it, the one who is still standing, the one who trusts in God, the one who perseveres is a blessed one. So persevere. Persevere through your trials. Persevere through your situations. Uh, stand. Abide in them. Tarry in them. In other words, when you suffer through it, you are blessed. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. This guy, this girl, this woman, this man who suffers through it, the one who is able to stand in the midst of your trials without sinning, you will receive a, a crown of life. You will receive a crown. This word crown, this word crown is, 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 it means exalted rank. 
crown is a is a wreath. In biblical days, they would take garland and and they would twist it and twine it and set it on a person's head when he or she has become the victor in an Olympic event. This word crown means that it's a mark of royalty. It's mark of royalty. You will receive a crown. Once you are approved, you will receive a crown of life. The word approved means to be accepted. The word approved means to be tried, tried. And once you have been tried, once God has accepted you in the midst of your temptation, you have not given out, you have not given in, you have not given up. The Bible says you will receive a higher rank, a crown. You will receive a mark of royalty. You will receive a symbol of honor. This crown of life. And certainly this word life is... Is, is eternal life. It is life evermore. So you will receive a high rank and exalted rank somewhere you've never been. It's a mark of royalty. It is a badge of royalty. It is an exalted mark that you will receive the crown of life. All of us have to go through temptations. All of us suffer through temptations. All of us will have temptations. But the author here, James, tonight admonishes each of us to press a beer in our trials, to don't give in. The apostle Paul says, there's no temptation unto, that has come upon you that is not common to every other man. Everybody goes through trials. Everybody goes through temptations. And it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. He promises that once you have been tried, once you have been approved, you will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. God has promised those who love him that they will receive the crown of life, eternal life. Verse 13 says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by the Lord. I oftentimes tell you the devil, the Lord's and COVID-19 are the most lied on entities in the world. He says, don't let any man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. I am tempted by God for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. He says that, God himself is not tempted by evil. It doesn't even appeal to God to be tempted by evil. God himself is not tempted by evil, and God himself never tempt anyone. Uh, uh, it says God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. If God is not tempting us, then who is? It has to be the devil. So God is not tempting anyone. Verse 14 says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. He is drawn away. How is man tempted? He is tempted by his own desires. He is tempted by his own enticements. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away, when he is drawn away by his own enticements. This word drawn, this word drawn away, this phrase drawn away, it means to be dragged away. It means to be seduced. It's another term that means to be, be dragged away, be dragged away, to be dragged away from safety. So we allow our temptations, we allow our lust, we allow our own enticements. 
The word desires here is another word for lust. Our desires, our lusts, this forbidden long, longingness, our cravings. What do you crave? <laughs> what is it that you crave? Well, I'll just tell you. I, I tell you, I crave the chocolate cake. And it's not enough to be just a chocolate cake. I want that chocolate cake. German chocolate is fine. But I want the chocolate cake to be chocolate on the inside, chocolate in between sections, chocolate in between layers. And of course, I want some chocolate on the top. That causes a craving for me. It's a longing for me. I can even see it going in my mouth and melting between my teeth. And the dentist gets paid every time. It's a, it's a craving, it's a longing, and that's how it is with any sin. We have a craving, and it is our craving, our desires, that drags us away from safety. Verse 14, verse 14 says, each one is tempted when he or she is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. When you're drawn away by your own desires or your own lust, then you are enticed. Then you are lured. You are lured into temptation. This word lured is the same as the word bait or to be caught by a bait, to be led astray by a bait. When anybody goes fishing, they want to put some kind of bait on their hook so the fish will bite it. I've said to our young people, don't take the bait mm -hmm. because the bait is there. The enticement is always there. We're enticed. We have a bait dangling before us. And as we have this bait dangling before us, when the moment we bite, let's look at verse 15 and it tells us what happens when we bite the bait. I'm saying don't take the bait. There used to be a movie. There used to be a, a movie that come that used to come on once a week. And it came on late night. So I would sit up late night just to watch it. It was called The Bait Car. B-A-I-T, The Bait Car. And what the police officers would do, they would, they would drive a, a nice, expensive, good-looking car into a neighborhood that was, that was already corrupt in car theft. So they would drive this nice car and they would sit it in the middle of this neighborhood and they would put a little innocent woman in it and she would get out the car and she would walk in and she would be gone for a long time. And she was a police officer. She would leave the bait car right there and she would accidentally, uh, it seems like, she would accidentally leave the bait car door open. And they would get in the car, the guys in the neighborhood would get in the car and they would drive off in the car and sometimes the keys were left. Other times they would hotwire the car. They would get in the bait car and they would drive off in the bait car. And when they would drive off in the bait car, bait, bait car the doors would automatically lock. And when the police officer pulled them over, they would try to kick the windows out. They would try to kick the doors open. The doors and the windows would not come open. They just took the bait. They took the bait because this was simply a bait car to see if they would take the bait. And every single time they would take the bait, the devil is, is shaking the carrot, shaking the bait, shaking the cake, shaking whatever appears to you right before you. This is enticement. The word enticement means bait. Don't take the bait. I'm telling you today, don't take the bait. The bait always looks good. Amen. The bait always feels good. And the bait always can build you up in pride. It will make you say, I'm the man. I'm the woman. It's, the, it's called the bait. And on every corner, in every house, in every school, in every church, there is some bait. I'm saying to you, don't take the bait. 
the, the text the text clearly declares that that men men are not drawn away by temptation that comes from God for God doesn't tempt us and then God is not tempted by temptation. But it clearly says that it's when each person is tempted, it only occurs when they are drawn away by his or her own desires and enticements. It's what we have in our head, it's what we have in our heart that pulls us away every time. I'm saying to you, it's the bait. Word enticement is the bait, don't take the bait. Verse 15, it says, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Paul says, for the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So when you have a bait, when you've been enticed, when you give in to your desires, when you are dragged away from safety, some would say, as you are dragged away from safety, when you are dragged away from safety, meaning that you are dragged away from the ark of safety, when you are dragged away from God, then when you submit to it, when it is conceived, Whenever temptation, whenever your desires have been conceived, then it gives birth to sin. It says, be angry. We talked about anger last week. Be angry, but sin not. For when you give in to your desires. See, many of us desire to be angry. We look forward to being angry. We're excited about being angry. Some people are just angry just to be angry. Some people just love to be angry. They want to find something. They pray for something to be upset about. He says, whenever your desires have been conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is full grown, it brings forth death. For the wages of sin is death. The payment for sin is death. The payday for sin is death. The check for sin, the paycheck for sin is death. For everybody, it's spiritual death. But for many, it becomes physical death. Because many times, sin pulls us away from the ark of safety, and it pulls us into sin. Sin pulls us into a place of no return. We physically never return because we actually physically die. But one thing that happens to everybody, we spiritually die. And when we have spiritual death, we are separated from God. We can't get to God. God can't get to us. There's a, there's a spiritual separation between the two. And when that spiritual, sep spiritual separation takes place, we can't hear from God and God can't hear, hear from us because sin stands between us. There's a great gulf that stands between us. We can't get to God. God can't get to us. We can't fellowship with him. He can't fellowship with us because sin is in the way. Sin is that great gulf. And those of, of you who are not born again, sin is still there. And you can't get to God until you come to Jesus Christ. It is only because sin is in the way. Verse 16, he says, don't, don't be, do not be deceived. Whatever you do, don't be deceived. Don't believe these old wise fairy tales. Don't believe in the conspiracy theories that say that you can get away with it. He says, do not be deceived, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Don't think that the devil has something to offer and sin has something to offer you that is better than what God has to present. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above 
and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Don't be deceived. Don't think that the devil in sin has a good and a perfect gift to offer. Don't you think that sin, don't you think that God and God will offer you temptation because he doesn't do it? Do not think that the devil has a good thing to offer you. Don't think that sin will win out in the end. Sin won't live, won't live to the end. It says, every good and every perfect gift comes from above. It comes down from the Father of lights. First of all, he says, every good and every perfect gift. He talks about a gift. A gift is free. A gift is no charge. Every good, what about a good gift? Every good gift, every pleasant gift, every beneficial gift, every gift that is of God going to come down from God. It's a shame people will pray. Let me see if I can pray if this is from God. Well, it's not a good gift because good gifts are beneficial and good gifts last a long time. Good gifts last for a lifetime. Then he says a perfect gift. The word perfect means complete. It comes with the notion and the idea that it lasts for the full age of mankind. Every single gift that God gives us, it will last for the age of mankind, the full age of mankind. And it comes down from the Father of light. You know, the devil is the father of darkness. The devil is the father of chaos. The devil is the father of, of, of just total destruction. But the God we serve is the father of life. He is the father of lights. He is the father of lights so much so until he illuminates. This word lights is illumination. It, this word lights is fire. That's why we, we talk about having the, the fire of the Holy Spirit because God himself is light. He is fire. He manifests himself in a shine. He is a father of light. God doesn't fool us. He doesn't, he doesn't do the, the bait and switch on us. He's a father of lights. He he is the one that pulls us out of darkness into the marvelous light. He wants us to walk in the light. He wants us to he wants us to live in the light. He wants us to run in the light. He's the father of lights. When darkness was upon the deep, God spoke and the light came skipping and running and jumping to, through the universe. It was, it was darkness upon the deep. The world was null and void, and God spoke in darkness. In the middle of nowhere, on the balcony of nothing, God spoke and light came. That's because he's the father of lights. He's the maker of lights. And he has no variations. He's the father of light. He, he has no variableness. He has no flickering. He doesn't change from one thing to the other. In other words, God being the father of light, God in his lights are not a flickering light. It's a steady light. It's a constant light. If you want to be in control, you're going to have to be with the father of lights. You can't blow up on everything. You can't shout over everything. You can't fight over everything. And the only way for you to have control, even over your temptations, is to walk with the Father of lights, mm -hmm. with whom there is no variation or no shadow of turning. He won't change. He won't change. He, he, there will be no revolution. He is 
the Father of lights. He's God himself. Verse 18 says, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. It was God's will that we were brought forth. It was the will of God that we were brought forth and we were brought forth by the word of truth. This word truth means veracity, a verity. This, when you, whenever you go into a courtroom the, and there's a witness on the stand, the prosecuting attorney is trying to figure out, the judge is trying to figure out if this person on the stand is one that can be believed, one who has veracity, one who's walking in truth. Therefore, we, we need to understand that the God we serve has no variations. He has no shadow of turning, not even a glimpse of turning. He's the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. He's the same God. Verse 18, of whom, of whom, of of whom he himself, God himself, brought forth us. We were saved. We were made who we are. We were brought forth by the word of truth. If you are saved, you became saved by the word of truth. If you are born again, it's the word of truth. It's the God truth that has brought you forth. It's the truth of God himself. It is the word of God that has saved us. And it's the word of God that will save us from temptation. We all tempted of something. We all got something that we see, something that we crave after, something that makes us proud of ourselves. It's something about us that we like about it that drags us away from God in God's ark of safety. See, as long as we walk with the Lord, we're in this ark of safety. As long as we're, we're fellowshipping with him, as long as we're not caught in sin, and this word, this word caught in sin, it, 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 he says, don't be deceived. This word deceived means to be caught up. It means to be arrested. He says, don't be deceived. Don't get caught in sin. Don't, don't get to a point where, where you're so tied up in what you're doing and your own personal desires that you have no self-control. Self-control is, is not, a, it's not something that you have to really be spiritual about. You just have to walk in the spirit and God will keep you under control. Don't do something that you will regret the rest of your life. Make sure that you walk in the truth of the word. See, there's no turning in God. There's no changing. There's not even a shadow of turning. There's no variations. He's the same God. He does what he does all the time, the way he wants to do it. And he blesses us as we follow him. Of his own will, God has chosen of his own will to bring us forth by the word of truth. It was God choosing us, not we choosing God. God has chosen us. And because God has chosen us, then we are blessed of God. We are blessed of God. And then he says that we might be a kind of first fruit of every creature, of his creatures. We're the first fruit. In other words, we are a kind of first fruit because we know that Jesus Christ is the first fruit. We are a kind of first fruit. We are the beginning of sacrifices. In other words, when you're saved, when you're born again, when God has, has captured your attention and you no longer let sin arrest you and pull you away or drag you away from the ark of safety, when you no longer just lose control over what your personal desires are, then you become the first fruit of his creatures. You, God is able to look at you and say, this is the beginning of what I want people to look like, what I want saints to look like. This is what saints ought to look like. He says, because when temptation is conceived, when your desires and your enticement, when temptation 
is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And please remember, we, we're, not, we're not tempted and, and drugged or dragged away by the devil. Tonight he says, we're just losing control. He says to us that if we're going to have self-control, we had to get some things under control. He says we are dragged away by our own fleshly desires. What we really want out of life, we are dragged away. Goes on to say, God has brought us forth by the word of truth. He promises us a crown of life. This crown of life is a symbol of royalty. This crown of life is a mark of royalty. This crown of life is a badge of royalty. This crown of life is eternal life. We can have eternal life. There may be somebody listening to me tonight that can't identify and don't have God on your heart, God on your side when it comes to temptation. And so you have to give in. Every time you look up because you don't have God on your side, you've never been saved, you've never been born again, and, and because you don't have Jesus, the devil has a field day with you. The devil leads, just leads you along the way. You can be saved tonight. You can go to heaven when you die, and you can be guaranteed of that tonight. You must be. You got to be. You have to be born again. Now, being born again is not running, jumping, shouting, rolling in the aisle. Being a born again is not even a church event. These things you may do, it's left up to you and the Holy Spirit. But what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And our obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. Will you trust him tonight? Will you believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you and he died for me? Will you believe the story that he died on a skull hill called Calvary? He died on a stick. He died on a cross. He died on a tree. Between two things, Jesus died for you and me. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose just for you. Had it been no one on planet earth but you, Jesus would have died he would have been buried and he would have risen just for you. But since we are living, since we are here, and there's more than one person here, he died for the whole world. If you want to be saved tonight, if you want to meet Jesus when you die, if you, if you want to go to heaven, would you join me in prayer and just repeat these simple words after me and invite Christ into your life to be your Savior. Will you bow with me and invite Jesus into your life? Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you was buried in a borrowed tomb. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you pray this prayer, you're now born again. You, Whether you die soon or later, you, you will go to heaven when you die. 
we believe that you're now a child of God and uh, that you will have a crown of life, eternal life, where you will live from now on with the Father of lights. There may be others of you who are caught in temptation, who have no control over your own spirit, who have no control over the temptations around you. You are being dragged. Even though you're saved, you're being dragged away by your own fleshly desires and your own enticements. I say to you, I want to pray with you and ask God to, to keep you and allow you to surrender unto him. Father God, we come now praying for those who struggle. They struggle with their cravings. They struggle with their desires. They struggle with their lust. I ask you to touch in the name of Jesus. We come now asking you, Father God, to bless us that we will be redirected. We pray, Father God, that you turn us around, that we will have a recommitment, that we will be about your business, that we will stay focused on you and you alone. We pray that you bless us now, Father God, that we will rededicate repent and re be removed from sin and our fleshly desires. That we would turn to you, Father God, the author and the finish of our faith. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church right here in Southeast Houston. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where Jesus Christ is the one who makes the difference. Where Jesus is the one who is the main attraction. If you want to join the New Beginning Church, please inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of this great church. And we'd be glad to welcome you. For those of you who have prayed to receive Jesus Christ tonight, inbox me and let me know. I'd like to rejoice with you. And those of you who have prayed to reconnect and recommit to Jesus and to our Lord, inbox me and let me know. We want to celebrate together. In our prayer time, we want to remember the, the Galleon family and the Grimes family. We want to lift this family in prayer in the death of their loved ones. We want to pray for Sister Lydia and Lee. Sister Lydia Lee is the mother of Pastor L.D. Lee. We want to lift her in prayer. We pray for Sister Vivian Oslahart. We pray for Sister Eloise Johnson as we lift them in prayer. Please remember this Sunday, November the 21st, at the New Beginning Church is the Pastor and Wife Appreciation where the New Beginning Church will be showing appreciation to Pastor Matthew Davis and Sister Carolyn Davis. It will be a morning service at 10.30 a.m. and our guest preacher will be Dr. Richard Jewel Rose. Please join us, please come by and help us celebrate. Only one service, 10.30 a.m. that morning. That's this Sunday, November 21st. We'll be glad to celebrate with you as as our church has come together to show us appreciation. It is offering time, and it's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. You can give by two means. Number one, you can give by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com is our zelle account or you can mail your offering your tithes your sacrificial gifts into the new beginning church p.o box 503 missouri city texas that's the new beginning church p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459 
at 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for, for listening tonight. And please, ma'am, please, sir, send this message to somebody else. All of us are struggling with temptation. All of us are struggling with self-control. All of us are struggling with something in our lives. So please, ma'am, please, sir, share this video and share and look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, that you are our great king. You're the one who keeps us. We thank you for every giver, Father God. We actually bless them to give, that they will give with pure hearts, that they will give cheerfully. Now we pray for the Galleon family. We pray for the Grimes family. We ask you to bless them in times like these, during these moments of bereavement. We pray for Sister Lydia Lee. We pray for Sister Vivian Oglaha. We pray for Sister Eloise Johnson. We ask you to keep them, elevate them. We pray, Father God, that you encourage them and bless them. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you are able to keep us in the midst of our temptations. Bless us that we won't take the bait. Bless us, Lord, that we will look to Jesus and that he will answer for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.